Alright guys, what's up and here we go, we have new games announced as I'm sure you know because you clicked on this video or have seen it before or just uh, completely clueless in which case Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon will be released in November of 2017 on the 17th worldwide. Now worldwide is pretty, I'm pretty happy about that, thank god the Pokemon company or Nintendo or whatever you want to refer to them as finally decided to do another worldwide release. But that's not the most important part of the video, of course, because we need to look at the games themselves. Now, we don't have much, because what they did in their little Pokemon Direct is they had about six or seven minutes of Pokken, and they were like, oh look, Pokken or Pokken? I don't know which one it is. Pokken, probably. Uh, oh, new Pokken for the Switch, 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 Pokken, Pokken, Pokken. Oh yeah, by the way, new game. Pokken, Pokken, Pokken. It's like, what? Wait, what? 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 New, what, what, what? new game? What? And we have Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So, not much information at the moment, but enough to go off of and actually talk about some stuff about it. So, the website for the games literally has, has Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and of course these two new forms, which I'll put images on screen now, and then obviously a new light shines on Alola, launching worldwide November 2017, November 2017, yeah, 2017. So that's all we have with that. In terms of the trailer itself, we have very few sort of snippets or screenshots, but enough to sort of get a general feel. So we'll go through them bit by bit. The first screenshot or the first sort of scene has us in basically the same bedroom we started off in, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now of course, these, hopefully these little screenshots will allow us to determine whether it's a remake, sequel, update, you know, third series game sort of thing, like Black 2, White 2, um, or, you know, something similar. So, same room, the clothes are slightly different, as you can see, whether that means you can, you know, choose clothes before the game starts, one possibility, you can choose them like a select number of clothes, maybe. Um, or it just means they redesign the, the player characters just to, you know, so it's not exactly the same game copy over like they did for um, obviously Black 2 and White 2, not the same player characters. Looks like they might have the same player character itself, um, but you know, not the same clothes, just there's some differentiation. But the first scene shows us just the room, the, the usual startup. The second one shows us a, a sort of screen of you running from your house up towards the, you know, the starting village. I can't remember the name of the top of my head now. But you can see here the one difference is I think the garage is open, I don't think the garage is usually open, but maybe that's just me. We always have a wing girl flying around our heads, so maybe that's new, who knows. But apart from that, pretty much the same. And then going on from that, the next thing, the camera is a bit more dynamic, I think, um, off some hair, but the next thing we have, the three starters looking to be in exactly the same place as we had in Sun and Moon, the same town. So just the three starters, a bit more animation going on there, a bit more cutscene. Um, we have some Pikachu jumping in and playing around what looks to be near, um, off the top of my head, that this would be, um, near the, the trial area for, um, for Lana's trial, can't remember the name of it at the moment. But you can see that in the background there's also a trial guide, so we can assume trials will be returning in this update. You would expect so anyway, it's based in the Alola region, so it's very likely. And then we have some, just some Pikachus playing around. And we have Togdemonu looking very, very menacing. I don't know what he's doing there. We also have Mimikyu looking very menacing again. Maybe some updated animations, something like that, extra move animations. Possible, who knows. We also have Lycanroc jumping up in the air. And then it cuts to, of course, some images of the new Solgaleo with his epic ultra armor um i'm going to call it ultra armor we'll talk more about that in a second and of course we have also scenes of lunala in her or i was going to say her ultra armor too and then we have a screenshot of the player character with a Z ring now you see the Z ring is black it's not white as we we had in um in sun and moon it's black so because you know if we look at the logos for ultra sun and ultra moon there are black sections on the logos uh, you can see the, the sun logo has extra sort of spikes and additions there, whereas the moon one has little, almost like black wings on the edges of it, linking in of course to the legendaries, so it seems like a black theme. So we're going to talk about more of this in future videos of course, but a general overview, Ultra in the names, we of course had the Ultra Beasts introduced in Sun and Moon, so it seems like they might have some more emphasis in this new version. Of course we can't forget the extra armour and uh, black areas on Solgaleo and Lunala, extra sort of limbs it seems like, extra armor, extra placing, extra spikes. This is a clear and almost obvious um, link to Necrozma. We you know, we know Necrozma is the third member of the trio. We thought, ah, oh, maybe is gonna get a second form. But from these images and what we've seen, it looks like rather than Necrozma being the third one and being the most powerful, or conversely being like Curum and being the catalyst, it is, it is a catalyst basically. It looks to be an enhancer for Solgaleo or Lunala, you can see the extra armor on it, making it more powerful, we can assume, uh, and linking it like that. One difference also to point out is that in the videos we've seen, we have a normal Solgaleo and a normal Lunala with the extra armor, whereas in the artwork we have like almost glowing 
what that means. I don't know whether it's like an extra form or a powered up form. Or the, you know, we had the um, the different forms for the original Soul Glare and Lunar when they were using their Z moves. So maybe it's that there. But it looks like Necrozma is armor or you know, an enhancer for Soul Glare and Lunar, and that makes a lot of sense because remember, Soul Glare and Lunar are light Pokemon. They not light Pokemon the type, but you know, they exude light. We have the sun and the moon. Whereas Necrozma is the prism Pokemon. Now, what does a prism do? It focuses light, or it splits light. It's basically, you know, it interacts with light in a certain way. Hence, applying its armor to Solgaleo or Lunala looks to be like it would increase their power. It makes a lot of sense. Increases the power of light. Now, whether this is the whole of Necrozma, um, or whether you can split Necrozma into two and, and you know, attach one half to Solgaleo, one half to Lunala, something like that, or whether it's just having them in the same party attaches, you know powers up Soul Glow and We don't know, of course, because that's all we know for the moment, but it looks to be some form of enhancer for them. So what does that mean for the story? Because that's a big part. Is it going to be a sequel? Is it going to be a remake? Um, it looks to be, from what we've seen, what I would draw is that it is not a, not a sequel, definitely not a sequel, but possibly just sort of a rehash is what I'm going to refer to it as. So similar to Emerald is a rehash of Ruby and Sapphire, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are a rehash of Sun and Moon. They're not sequels like Black 2 and White 2 were because they don't happen in the same timeline. They're an ultra, ultra timeline, I suppose, a separate timeline, um, and you know, in the future would be sort of considered canon games because I'm assuming Necrozma will have some form to play in, in the Sogla Lunala storyline, of course, um, and you know, just adjustments in the storyline. I think that's what I'm thinking. The reason I think of that uh, straight away is because obviously we had that scene. The, gut, uh, you know, the player character is in exactly the same room um, as we were in Sun and Moon, so why would they give us exactly the same house, exactly the same player features? Uh, it would just look really weird, um, and yet yeah, to be to be told, oh yeah, uh, six years ago, someone that looks just like you lived in this house and they became the champion. Yeah, who would have guessed? It would look weird. And uh, you know, how would you, if you then use those players in the sequel, how would you have them appear in the game? Because customization, you don't know what they would look like unless, of course, you can import a save in something like that. Which would be pretty cool, uh, I'll mention now. But I think it's going to be a rehash, is what I refer to it as, um, with Necrozma coming in similar to, you know, um, Emerald Argo again or Platinum, where you have the third member coming in and tie the stories together. Of course, we're not getting a Platinum from a Diamond and Pearl, we're getting an Ultra Sun and an Ultra Moon from a Sun and Moon, so it's not going to be a com combination, it's going to be more of a update almost. So, an update version. So, we have Necrozma coming in and it's going to update the story somehow. Now, this initially sounds really sort of boring, like, oh shit, like, we're just going to play the same trials again, the same route again. It's possible. Of course, Emerald, we did pretty much just play the same route, same with Platinum. But there were some really nice updates, some really nice quality of life updates, so you could see some of the trials getting updated to be a bit more interesting, a bit funner, maybe a bit more challenging, not, you know, some of the um, Toji Pokemon are already pretty challenging anyway. But you could see some stuff like that. And the main thing I would draw from that is the fact that since it will be based in a new timeline and be basically completely detached from Sun and Moon, we could see more Alolan forms being brought in. And with the release of Gold and Silver on the Virtual Console, it makes a lot of sense that those Alolan forms will be based on Johto Pokemon makes a lot of sense um, so you could have you, you could bring these Johto alone forms in as extras and you wouldn't have to explain it away with some canon you know um, you know in universe explanation so whereas if you were doing a sequel and it was four years down the line you'd have to say oh yeah we, we just found these extra Pokemon you know <laughs> who would have guessed obviously here you can have a completely different time of course out of universe you know, the Pokemon company can just say new alone forms have appeared and we can't really question it too much because that's always how it had been in the as we shall refer to it, the Ultra Timeline. Now, what this means in general for maybe deeper meanings of the game, Ultra being the, the name sort of, uh, of the games, it, it sort of indicates more Ultra Beast um, references and sort of involvement. Of course, we have the, the post game in the you know, currently um, in Sun and Moon. It's not brilliant, it's just Ultra Beast based, but of course, they can then develop that, have it be similar, but of course, have it be that maybe. You go back into Ultra Space, or the Ultra Beasts are more involved in the main time in the main plotline, because that's what some things that you know people complained about. Oh yeah, the Ultra Beasts came in like halfway through when um when Lusamine, you know, revealed it or uh, you know, what do we refer to it as? Um, it's, you know, unlocked them all. I don't know, escaped them all. I, I can't think right now. You know, when she did that, but they were not really combined in the storyline at all. You, you you defeated Nihilego, and that was really it. So maybe you could have the Maxi player role in the main story now. 
uh, and adjust some things basically. So it's basically an opportunity for them to right some wrongs from the original game while also bringing in some new and, and interesting concepts of course. But some people might not have that view so please feel free to let me know what you think down below. Are you are you excited to have an update to Sun and Moon or were you expecting a Dive and Pearl remake or hoping for like a sequel that would build on the story? And yeah, let me know about that down below. And of course, anything you want me to talk about regarding these games, or you want me to speculate on Team Skull, AFA Foundation, you know, Lily, maybe, maybe she's coming back, who knows? Let me know down below in the comment section what you'd like to see, and I shall see what I can make happen. But for now, I guess it's going to be for me for today. I cannot speak, um, but it's exciting. Uh, it's got a, you know, so it's June now. We got November, so five months of speculation ahead of us, guys. Get on the train. We're going. Woo -hoo! Um, that's going to be it for me for today. So I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching, goodbye my friends.